Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Dentistry to the Point. This is Dr. Rumil Manik. So in our previous lectures of renal system, we discussed about acute glomerulonephritis. In today's discussion, we have a new topic that is nephrotic syndrome. So discussing about before discussing about nephrotic syndrome, I want to request you to watch the videos that you are watching to the end so that you have a knowledge of the topic that you have to know exactly what is in the topic. And the other thing is that if you have any topics related to dentistry, whether it may be first year, second year, third year or Final year, कोई से भी topic या कोई से भी subject में आपको doubt है तो please आप comment section में लिख दीजिए या फिर we also have our Instagram page named dentistry to the point I'll share the link in the description आप उसपे follow कर लीजिए और उधर personally मुझे text करके बता सकते हैं कि आपको किस किस videos या किस किस topics पे lectures की जरूरत है so now let's move on to our first and the foremost that is nephrotic syndrome so nephrotic syndrome kya hai? Nephrotic syndrome consists of five things in total. Jo five things main rahe ki nephrotic syndrome mein. Wo hai massive protein urea matlab bahut zyada protein ka loss hoga in urine. Next is pitting edema. Pitting edema kya hoga ki? Koi bhi agar edema ka case rahe ga. Usme aap finger press karke. If you press the finger for 10 to 15 seconds. And you remove the finger, you can see a pit onto the patient's skin. जो भी pit दिखेगा, उसको अपन कहते हैं pitting edema. The third point is protein urea. Protein urea के बारे में बताया मैंने कि it will be massive protein urea that is more than 3.5 grams per day. Nephrotic syndrome में क्या था? It was less than 3.5 grams per day. एक nephrotic range थी decided जिसको वो cross नहीं कर रहा था. Third is hypoalbuminemia and fourth, fifth one is hyperlipidemia. क्या हो गया? Protein urea, pitting edema, hypoalbuminemia and hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia मतलब there is more formation of lipoproteins and cholesterols in the body. So next, moving on ये तो था introduction about nephrotic syndrome की this characterized of this four or Five things. Next, moving on to the pathogenesis of nephrotic syndrome. So, nephrotic syndrome में क्या आएगा? सबसे पहले जो main cause या main reason to develop a patient with nephrotic syndrome क्या आएगा कि glomerular injury. अगर कोई भी patient के glomerulus में injury होगी, then it will lead to two things. That is, firstly, increased urinary protein. लॉस मतलब कोई भी ग्लोमेरुलर इंजरी के बाद उसके जो एंडोथेलियल सेल्स रहेंगे उसकी जो पोर की साइज रहेगी वो इंक्रीज हो जाएगी उसके कारण देर विल बी इंक्रीज लॉस ऑफ प्रोटीन सिद्ध यूरिन जो भी ब्लड फिल्टर होगा उसमें से प्रोटीन एक्सक्रीट होना स्टार्ट होंगे उसके अलावा देर विल बी इनएडिक्वेट हेपेटिक सेंसेसिस ऑफ प्रोटीन क्या होगा जो भी प्रोटीन बन रहे हैं लिवर में उनका इनएडिक्वेट सेंसेसिस होगा देट विल नॉट बी Sufficiently developing according to demands of the body. So in dono condition ko mila ke kya hoga? There will be hypoalbuminemia. That is decreased formation or decreased formation of proteins or albumin in the body. Uska jo concentration hoga kam ho jayega. Kyu? Ek to inadequate hepatic synthesis of proteins se aur dusra there is increased urinary protein. Loss. So due to this hypoalbuminemia, there will be three things which will happen. That is first, decreased oncotic pressure. जो भी oncotic pressure रहेगा vessels के अंदर जो भी pressure रहेगा वो decrease हो जाएगा. क्यों decrease होगा? अगर proteins excrete हो रहे हैं, तो all the intravascular fluid will move into the extravascular spaces. दूसरी चीज क्या होगी? There will be increased synthesis of LDL and Cholesterol and third thing which will happen is urinary loss of antithrombin 3. Jo bhi clotting factor hai antithrombin 3, there will be urinary loss of that factor along with decreased serum levels of protein S and C. Protein S and C ke protein level, proteins S and C ke levels decrease ho jayenge. So now this, due to this decreased oncotic pressure, there will be formation of edema in the body. 
अभी इडिमा कैसे होगा ओंकोटिक प्रेशर डिक्रीज हो रहा है तो जो भी इंट्रावेस्कुलर फ्लूड इन दर मूविंग आउटसाइड द आउटसाइड इन टू द एक्स्ट्रा वेस्कुलर स्पीसीज सो नाउ दिस फ्लूड मूविंग इन टू द एक्स्ट्रा वेस्कुलर स्पीसीज विल कॉज इडिमा अगेन ड्यू टू यूरिनरी लॉस ऑफ एंटीथ्रोमिन थ्री देर विल बी कोलोपैथी दैट इज हाइपर कोआल स्टेट विल डेवलप एंड थर्ड इंक्रीज सिंथेसिस ऑफ एल डी एल और कोलेस्ट्रॉल की वजह से देर विल बी हाइपर लिपिडेमिया देर विल बी इंक्रीज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ लिपिड एंड अलॉन्ग विद दिस देर विल बी लिपिड यूरिया एक्सक्रीशन ऑफ लिपिड इन टू द यूरिन सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन एंड पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम next we'll discuss about the clinical features investigation and management about this condition so next moving on to the causes of nephrotic syndrome so in the causes of nephrotic syndrome we have divided this into two categories that is the primary one and the secondary causes which are responsible for the occurrence of this condition so in the primary causes for nephrotic syndrome we have the idiopathic causes which are of unknown ओरिजन इडियोपैथिक का मतलब क्या हुआ एनी ऑफ दिस कंडीशन विच इज ऑफ अनोन ओरिजन और अनोन कॉज जिसका कोई रीजन पता नहीं है सो अमोंग दैट वी हैव मिनिमल चेंज डिसीज मेम्ब्रेनस ग्लोमेरोलो नेफ्राइटिस मेजेंजियल प्रोलिफ्रेटिव ग्लोमेरोलो नेफ्राइटिस मेजेंजियो कैपिलरी ग्लोमेरोलो नेफ्राइटिस एंड फोकल सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरोलो स्क्लेरोसिस वी हैव फाइव थिंग्स विल रिवाइज इट वंस मिनिमल चेंज डिसीज मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ ग्लोमेरोनेफ्राइटिस मेजेंजियल प्रोलिफ्रेटिव ग्लोमेरोनेफ्राइटिस मेजेंजियो कैपिलरी ग्लोमेरोनेफ्राइटिस एंड फोकल एंड सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरोलो स्क्लेरोसिस यू जस्ट नीड टू मगअप दिस नेम्स नेक्स्ट इन द सेकेंडरी कॉजेस वी हैव अगेन द फाइव कैटेगरी फर्स्ट वन इज द इन्फेक्शन सेकेंड वन इज कनेक्टेड टिश्यू डिसऑर्डर्स थर्ड वन इज नियोप्लाजम्स फिफ्थ वन इज ड्रग्स एंड टॉक्सिन्स fourth one is drugs and toxins and fifth one is metabolic disorders so in the first one infections we have infective endocarditis malaria syphilis leprosy hepatitis b and hiv infection in connective tissue disorders we have sle that is systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis in neoplasms we have hodgkins lymphoma various carcinomas and leukemias in drugs and toxins we have penicillin captopril along with that we have some toxins like gold mercury and contaminated heroin and in metabolic disorders we have diabetes mellitus and amyloid dosis so these are the causes of nephrotic syndrome just try to remember them properly so that you can write it in the exam thoroughly moving on to the clinical features of nephrotic syndrome so in the clinical features of nephrotic syndrome the earliest and the first and the foremost sign which we see is periorbital edema so the meaning of word periorbital edema ka matlab kya hoga periorbital matlab around the orbit eyes ke puri charo taraf kya hoga edema hoga that will be swollen eyes you will see and also puffiness of the face in the morning so as soon as the patient awakens in the morning you can see periorbital edema and later on we can see whole puffiness of the face whole face will appear as swollen the second is sometimes generalized anasarca with collection of fluid in serous cavities which will lead to ascites so generalized anasarca what is meaning of generalized anasarca generalized anasarca means generalized edema of the body so in generalized edema of the body you can see edema of the hands legs feet shiny skin will be seen due to the edema and pitting edema will be seen in this condition along with this we can also see collection of fluids into the serous cavities kya hoga serous cavities mein fluid ka collection start hoga that will lead to condition that is ascites that is fluid accumulated in the stomach due to the hypoproteinemia impaired immunity or increased susceptibility to infections hypoproteinemia due to more excretion of proteins into the urine kya ho raha hai jab glomerular injury ho rahi hai to most of the proteins are excreted into the urine so this proteins excreted can lead to impaired immunity there will be depression or 
uh, impairment of immunity of the patient which will lead to increase in the chances of infection due to this condition. The fourth point is coagulopathy. So due to loss of antithrombin 3 as we saw in the pathogenesis there was loss of antithrombin 3 and also decrease in the serum levels of protein S and C which will lead to hypercoagulopathy. So this condition increases the chances of venous thrombosis. There will be more of thrombus formation in the veins. The fifth point is hypoalbuminemia or hypoproteinemia. The patients with hypoalbuminemia may have cough, dyspnea. Dyspnea is difficulty in breathing, pleural effusion that is fluid accumulation in the pleural cavity and Ascites. And lastly, patients with nephrotic syndrome usually maintain good renal function. So, patient with this syndrome doesn't have any difficulty in maintaining renal functions during Adamana. For long period of time, they do not have any problem maintaining their renal function. So, we'll revise it once. Firstly, periorbital edema along with puffiness of face. Generalized anasarco or you can also call it as generalized edema of the body along with ascites, impaired immunity that is due to hyperproteinemia and susceptibility to infections. Coagulopathy will lead to increased chances of venous thrombosis, hypoalbuminemia that is patients with hypoalbuminemia will have cough, dyspnea and pleural effusion along with ascites and they do not have any problem in maintaining their renal functions. Next we will discuss about the investigations and management of nephrotic syndrome. So next moving on to the investigations of nephrotic syndrome. So in the investigations of nephrotic syndrome firstly we will start with urine examination. So examination of urine what we will get the results is that proteinuria which is the must thing the proteins are excreted in large amounts in the urine that is more than 3.5 grams per day along with the proteins you will also see red cell casts so which are not usually common but they are uncommon they may or may not be seen along with that we will also see oval fat bodies which will also be seen they appear as cluster of grapes so we will see three things in urine examination firstly is proteinuria red cell cast and along with that we will see oval fat bodies which will appear as cluster of grapes. Secondly is 24 hour urine that I have already told you that proteinuria will be more than 3.5 grams per day. Third one is serum lipids. So about the serum lipids there is increased LDL and cholesterol. If you measure the concentration of lipids in the serum there will be increased amounts of low density lipoprotein along with Cholesterol, third point is serum proteins. So serum proteins will always be less because more number of proteins are excreted through urine. So we will find the finding as hypoalbuminemia. Third, next is ultrasound of abdomen. So ultrasound of abdomen may show normal small or large kidneys. Small kidneys are seen in conditions or disease cause underlying as glomerulonephritis. And large kidneys are seen in metabolic conditions such as amyloidosis and diabetic patients. We will also do renal biopsy. So renal biopsy will be done to assess the prognosis of the case and how is the patient responding to the treatment. And lastly we will do renal function test which will have normal results because there is not much of depression of the renal function of the Patient. So this is all about the investigations of nephrotic syndrome. Next, lastly, we are left with the management of this condition. So last thing which we are left with nephrotic syndrome is management or treatment of this condition. In the management and treatment of this condition, we need to treat edema, proteinuria, hyperlipidemia, corticosteroids and immunosuppressive therapy control of infection, anticoagulants to avoid thrombosis and clots and seventh is treatment of underlying disease. So firstly discussing about the edema. In edema the patient is advised to take low sodium diet that is 1 to 2 gram per day. No added salt is allowed to the patient in 
diet. Now, good protein diet is also advised to the patient because he is already facing the problem of protein urea. So, but in which condition if blood urea is normal? So, if the blood urea of patient is normal, he can also take good protein diet which will help him to cover the total loss of protein which we have which he has had during the course of his disease. Now if the condition of edema is mild we can use thiazides if the condition of edema is moderate in moderate cases we can use loop diuretics that is frusemide 80 to 120 mg per day torsemide that is 20 to 40 mg per day and lastly we will have bumetanide that is 2 to 3 mg per day in severe cases of edema we use, we need to use loop diuretics plus uh, diuretics which specially act on the distal convoluted tubule. Now why these are added because they will help in complete reabsorption of sodium from the distal convoluted tubule which will help in reduction of edema which was due to sodium and water retention. So severe cases will use the loop diuretics which we use in the moderate cases along with diuretics which act on distal convoluted tubule now which is the diuretic which act on distal convoluted tubule that is pyranolactone 100 and 200 100 and 100 to 200 mg per day along with this if the condition is more severe we can also add metolazone to make it as a triple combination drug now triple combination means loop diuretics special diuretics and metola zone. In desperate cases in which the loop diuretics are not working and not reducing the severe condition we can also use salt free albumin that is 20 gram in 100 ml in 1 hour or we can also use plasma albumin infusion with frusamide 40 mg intravenously to raise the serum albumin Concentration. Kya kar sakte upon desperate cases mein, desperate cases mein upon salt free albumin that is 20 gram in 100 ml in 1 hour can be given or plasma albumin infusion along with frusemide 40 mg intravenously can also be given to that patient. Next moving on to the protein urea. So total intake of protein should be equal to the total loss of protein to avoid the negative nitrogen balance in the body proteins not restricted until GFR falls below 25 milliliters per minute proteins apne ko kab tak restrict nahi karna hai jab tak patient ka GFR 25 ml per minute se niche fall nahi karta to reduce protein urea we can give angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers and NSA to decrease the protein urea Third is hyperlipidemia. So in hyperlipidemia, we will not advise any drug until the situation is much severe that it crosses the serum lipid concentration or cholesterol level crosses 500 mg. So if it crosses 500 mg, we will advise the patient to take atorvastatin 20 mg once or twice daily. Now for this hyperlipidemia, in normal cases, we will advise the patient to do exercise and Diet restriction for corticosteroids and immunosuppressive therapy which are given to suppress immune response and proteinuria. We need to control the infection along with the anticoagulants are also given and treatment of underlying disease. So this was all about the treatment of nephrotic syndrome. So I think so you have got the topic. If you have any doubts or queries regarding this topic or any other topic, please write down in comment section and let us know so that we can help you with that and you can also watch the video